when you think of that transformation of the, the software through those gates and delivering that value, one, you know, last month in Copenhagen, you were giving a talk, and I think you got a question which was, you know, and if so, is the West ahead of adversaries in technology like this? How far ahead? How big is that lead? And you mentioned in your answer that yes, they're ahead, but that the issue to work with isn't other people catching you from behind, it's Western governments not being able to move as quickly and efficiently as they can. You talked about budget appropriations and, and programmatic things. For this room and, and most of our audience today that's in the private sector, what do you think that acceleration looks like on the commercial side? And maintain well, business. again, I think what everyone in this room is going to do and what I think people have already done, and one of the coolest things I've ever seen in the history of Palantir is you go next door where these demos are and are, we're showing off our product and we have current partners showing other partners how you do this. Like, it's This thing about software that was always true is it's all BS until you try it. It's just, it's like, you know, I was constantly asked, what makes Palantir different than these five other companies? I don't know. Go try all of us. It's like, it just, it is, just try. Why don't you have a payment strategy? Because I, I know our partners, future partners, are smart enough to pay us a lot of money if we create a lot of value. Uh, what, 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 how do I know it will work? Well, we can show you it working, and we can show you how valuable it is. And what, what, what it basically means in the, so in the government context, you have this problem globally that 98% of software spend goes to people building things by hand that take five years, and maybe then take 10 years, and then they take 20 years, and, uh, and beyond that, that's just not how software is built at a world-class level. You can't have security if it's not a product. It's like, well, how are you, and it's very hard to do these things, but it's definitely not gonna work. So, and this is not just, this is not just America, this is everywhere, and then you have a lot of places, you know, one country doesn't wanna buy from another country, and quite frankly, many of our allies have a problem that all the products come from America anyway that work, so like, how do you explain that? Um, uh, in a commercial context, it's just very, it's very different. It's like we have a problem. Uh, Palantir has, a, you know, in the commercial context, multi-year, 10-year reputation for delivering very complicated systems that have worked across heterogeneous industries. Great. We're going to take it. They're making some pretty bold claims. You're going to say, great, if those bold claims are true, we want to see it. And then you go and test it. And then we enter into a relationship after you've gotten value. And, and, and the, the only thing I would say is this is kind of obvious. And, but where it's not obvious, we as a culture have to make it even more obvious. Because on paper, AI sounds like it, it's, it's very hard to know what will be valuable. And enterprises have very complicated internal technical challenges that are now being exposed. So one of the very advantageous things for us is AI will pen test your whole enterprise. You know, so you can, you can use a, our products, and, but the stronger your enterprise, the more value you're going to get. So it, that, that, that's like, so you're going to be, you're going to see this, and try it, get value, and then the next question is, well, how do I get even more value? Uh, and that's just a process that it, it's, it's not theoretical. It, it just has to be tried and, and proven. Maybe we should go to questions. Yeah, I was going to say, let's take some questions from the room. Or we could just talk about extinction. There's always one person who has like five questions, so that person should ask one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have our, our long-term advocate here. Friend, ask a question. That, yeah, you. I don't know, wanna ask a question? Okay, okay. I'll ask one more while we... Okay. It worked. I will ask one. I didn't know you were looking directly at me. Putting me on the spot. Um, there's, I mean, I'm representing one of these, but there's historically places in the world that have not had similar values, right, to the West or to the United States. And sometimes they're aligned, sometimes they're less aligned, right? And bringing something that delivers this kind of power and this kind of, of insight and efficacy into those markets, right, how does Palantir look like? Or how does, how does, how does Palantir look at that in terms of, like you're saying, bringing some of these Western values and the benefits that the way we think in the West uh, give us this, this kind of advantage, how do you look at bringing some other places that might necessarily not always align with us, bringing those kinds of capabilities to bear to actually help us in the long term deliver the, the values that we, we really want everyone to share? 
Um, well, you know, it's interesting. We have, I get, I've been asked this question a lot, and, um, but I have a select, I, I'm kind of, uh, I don't actually know the real answer now because when you see what we're building with these agents, it's really scary. <laughs> So it, it, it raises the threshold of where I, so the agent basically, Sean will show you this, but it takes the output of an LLM, creates it in a hybrid algorithm and allows you to run it passively, meaning all the time against your whole enterprise and depending on your, your, the quality of your security, you, you can segment, but it's still, you can see how that could be easily abused. Uh, and it, I do wonder if that should be sold to like local law enforcement um, uh, and so I don't know in the past we, we've always been like I'm, I'm not I'm in no way a neocon honestly I just think we, we have the West we have the core West and we have allies and we have customers all over the globe and if they're on our side I think we should cut them slack and if they're not but but slack doesn't mean everywhere and we, we used to have these ongoing discussions and we've refused to work with Lots of people, and it's cost us huge money, and I've been yelled at, and quite frankly, if I was fireable, I would have been fired many times over this. Um, and I still am, everyone's fireable, but it's a little harder because the alternative to me is an engineer. And the, nobody, nobody, everyone's afraid, even with our products, we'll have no revenue. So um, uh, um, it's really hard. Like, wait till you see Shams demo, it's like that, I'm sure we should sell this to U.S. industry. I'm sure we should, we should encourage clandestine service, special operators, current clients, the U.S. military, the five eyes. I'm sure we should give it to them. I think we're gonna have to have long discussions about where else because, y you know, it, it's like you don't wanna have something that could you know, we've been in the business actually of protecting everyone's right to their own liberty, which also means your own lifestyle, your own secrets, your own personal proclivities that are yours, your health records. Um, and I think that's one of the things that makes our society so special. So uh, there's a lot of new thought that's going to have to go on about this. But in the near term, if you're a U.S. industry, uh, industry in Europe, uh, clandestine services in the West uh, will definitely sell it to you um, and we'll have to think hard about everyone else.